All right, Shalom. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. <clears throat> Excuse me. The elect of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai, Bar Shem Rakakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth. Hopefully, this video is edifying to you, brothers, as well as you uh, sisters out there who believe in the household of faith, uh, who are part of the elect, because you have the elect men and you have the elect women, all right? Now, that being said, I'm going to call this video, We Are Not Under the New Covenant. What we are under is grace. We are not under the New Covenant, at least right now. What we are under is grace. And I'm drawing from what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. But before I go into that scripture, what inspired me to do this video was earlier this morning, I was listening to a video from GMS Vegas sit-downs. That's the brother Elder, Elder Karataza, which the name Karataza means diligent, and that brother uh, that that brother, the grace that have, have been given unto him, the grace that have been given unto him, which is what we're under, has made him very diligent. And I pray that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh keep that grace on him. Let me put it to you this way. By the time this video is done, you're going to see that we're totally under grace. You're going to learn what the word grace means, because I'm going to go into the word. I'm going to bring out definitions from the uh, Blue Letter Bible, as well as the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And you're going to clearly see that that is, it, that is exactly what we're under, grace. And we're not under the new covenant as under the law. We are under grace, okay? Now, concerning the law, we're rehearsing. It's a rehearsal, and that's based upon Judges 5 and 11. What we're doing is a rehearsal of the righteous acts, which goes back to the law. But to say we're under the law is not totally accurate because if you're under the law, then you have to keep every law to be justified by the law. And we simply can't do that, not in this sinful flesh. This is why we must be changed. And the, again, the Apostle Paul made it very clear that our bodies have to be changed. He said, this mortal, which is what we're in right now, must put on immortality. This corruption must put on must put on incorruption okay so we're in we're in mortal bodies we're in corrupt bodies right now so we have to be changed and that is the condition of the new covenant for you to be under the new covenant you have to be changed let me say that one more time because there's certain israelites out there that just can't get it and the reason why they can't get it is because they're not part of the elect the, the scripture is very clear when it says there there are some which will not endure sound doctrine. So these guys were called in and for a moment they endured for a moment till the time came when they couldn't endure anymore. And, you know, basically the Heavenly Father gave them a spirit of being a reprobate. The Apostle Paul talked about us not being reprobates. What's a clear sign of a reprobate? And what's, what, what does the word reprobate mean? A mind void of judgment. What's a clear sign of a reprobate? Well, he's he's an individual that is teaching. Uh, he is not teaching sound doctrine. He's an individual that is not teaching sound doctrine. That's a clear cut sign of a reprobate. Okay, and the Bible is very clear that you're going to have reprobates in the faith. Israelites who could not endure. They came in. They, they endured for a while. They were called, but obviously they were not chosen because they stopped enduring. They started teaching uh, they started teaching doctrine which makes no sense. They started teaching unsound doctrine. And that's a clear cut sign of a reprobate. Okay? So um, I was watching this video, like I said, by um, Elder Karadza, who the name Karadza means diligent. And like I said, he's He's, you know, by the grace given to him, he's, he's a very diligent brother. Um, 
the name of his video is and they shall not teach every man his neighbor now in his video he makes the he makes the point of saying when we're when we're totally under the new covenant we won't have to teach you know israelites won't have to teach fellow israelites because we'll instinctively know of the heavenly father and his son and he's totally correct that goes back to the book of uh, hebrews the eighth chapter also the book of jeremiah the 30 the 31st chapter okay uh also i watched um the video by shopper of the 12 uh the new covenant prophets say they can't die and a bunch of laughing emojis which <laughs> that, fun, that that video is, is very uh comical okay you know what group shopper of the 12 is talking about all right, I'm not even going to mention those guys' names. But, well, I'm going to mention what Apostle Tar calls them. He calls them the, the uh, persona non grata. Persona non grata. And that's Latin for uh, uh, a no per basically a no person. A persona non grata. As a matter of fact, let me, let me type that in. What is a persona non grata? Bear with me for a minute. What is a persona? Because uh, that's what Apostle Tar calls them. I'm not going to even mention their name, man. What is a persona non grata? There we go. <laughs> persona non grata. Again, that is Latin. And a an unacceptable or unwelcome person. <laughs> an unacceptable or unwelcome person. Okay, that's a persona non grata. So that's all you need to know about those guys. Anyway, you're going to see them anyway in this video that I'm going to play. I'm going to play Shopper of the Twelves video. And I'll let, I'll let the videos speak for itself now it so happens that um the sakari group led by a uh, priest alazar or chief priest alazar as that's his, his title um they debated uh, this persona non grata group okay <laughs> which which basically was a waste of time, but I guess they have their own reasons. I'm talking about Sakari, why they debated that persona non grata group. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Listen to, listen to, the, listen to the madness, okay? I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to stop it there, man. I, I, I had to jump on that one. I mean, I mean, I mean. Okay, let, let me bring it back a little bit. Get serious here. Right, but no, you just said it. You said I'm looking at him right now, so you got to be one of the 12, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean we are okay, the Okay, so can, can y'all die? I mean, we are the can y'all die? die? Can you die? die? Now, that was a very good question that uh, Alazar asked the persona non grata group. Alazar asked them, can you die? Because under, see, Alazar knows what the new covenant, what, in, what the new covenant entails. Under the new covenant, you cannot die. Again, this is why our bodies must be changed. And once our bodies is changed, we're, ne we're never going to die. We are never going to die. We're going to go from being mortals to immortals. Now, that's under the new covenant. So it's clear by Alazar asking those two individuals from the persona non grata group, it's clear Alazar understands what the new covenant is. 
unlike that group. They don't understand what the new covenant is. Okay, let's keep moving. Can I die? Yes. You know, you know why it's taking them so long to to uh, answer that is because they know deep down inside they know that death is possible, but under the new covenant, death is possible for them. But under the new covenant, you cannot die. That's why it's taking them so long to to answer that. We have not been changed yet. Once we're changed by Yahweh Shai, we will not be able to die. It will be impossible to die. Just like Yahweh Shai, he cannot die. Like he said, Yahweh Shai made a statement. He said, I live forevermore. That's one of the benefits under the new covenant. Okay? So that's why it's taking them guys so long to answer a simple question. And then the other guy, he, he, he even repeats the question. Oh, can I die? Yeah, can you die? What are you, deaf? Are you deaf or something? <laughs> let, let me stop. Let me stop. said in the second covenant, it has no death. Okay, so you, so you. Yeah, it says in the second covenant has no death. But he asked you, Alazar asked you guys in particular, can you die? And why is it taking you so long to to answer that? Because you know the answer. You know this. What you're looking at is a sign of a reprobate. That's a reprobate, one who cannot endure sound doctrine. Okay. Telling me that y'all can't die. According to the scriptures, we can't die. So that right there lets you know everything you need to know about those guys. All right? They are bogged out. All right? They are bogged out. Okay? It, it, it has no depth. Oh, shit. It went all, right. all right. All right. Go ahead. Whatever y'all got, man. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, having fun with that. Now, uh, let me bring in the scripture, right? Let me bring in the scripture. Because the Bible is very clear. It says, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I got to go to that scripture. And you just saw an example of that in living color. And it is right here. And this is something that the apostle Paul warned Timothy about. Remember, Timothy, when you go back in the history, Timothy was a bishop. Timothy was a bishop over the church at Ephesus, which, one, which was one of the largest churches that the Apostle Paul set up. And the Apostle Paul left Timothy in charge to basically run that church. Okay? So he left, the Apostle Paul left Timothy with explicit instructions and that's what the book of 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy is all about. That's for those of you who want to know about the history. You got to know the history, okay? So, again, let me say it again. The Apostle Paul uh, had a church at Ephesus, and he commissioned Timothy to be the bishop over that church. So he wrote to Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, he wrote to Timothy, uh, letters concerning how to take care of that church, explicit instructions. So he also warned Timothy of certain guys who would basically lose the faith, lose the grace, if you will, because that's really what we're under, grace, and become reprobates, become bug outs, like you just saw with the example with the clip that I played. This is Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. And uh, I'll start at the first verse. So again, this is the Apostle Paul writing this letter to Timothy. And he says to him, I charge thee therefore, charge means warn, before the Heavenly Father and the Lord Yahweh Shai, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. And we're still waiting for that. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. So, you know, we should be ready at all times to preach the word. Like the Apostle Tar says, we should be on the ready, right? Reprove, so that means correct. Rebuke, the same thing, correct. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, right? Exhort, meaning we're supposed to teach this 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 word with passion, and our passion is is supposed to inflame others 
into wanting to get into the word with the same kind of passion. Okay, that's what the word exhort means. Now, here's the point. The third verse. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And you just saw an example of that. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, speaking smooth things, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. What's Basically, what's a fable? A lie. Talking about you can't die. Yeah, that's underneath the new covenant, but you are not under the you are not underneath the new covenant. All right, what you will learn from this video is what you are under is grace. That's what you are under, and that's why Alazar asks you guys, "Well, can you die?" Because under the new covenant, which shows Alazar knows what the new covenant entails, under the new covenant you cannot die. The scriptures is very clear on this. One of the gifts you receive under the new covenant is immortality. Immortality means you cannot die. Okay? So he checkmated, Alizar checkmated you, you two guys with that question. You were checkmated. And you made yourself look stupid. Tell you like it is. Anyway, you're going to do what the Lord have made you reprobates. Let's get that. Let's get the book of Jeremiah. Uh, 6 and 33. Jeremiah 6 and 30. And, and that's a cautionary tale. Actually, Jeremiah 6 and 30. That's a cautionary tale. What you just saw there in that clip, that's a cautionary tale to us. How important it is to uh, not be a reprobate in the faith. Okay? Because you end up sounding uh, stupid. Okay? Jeremiah 6 and 30, reprobate silver shall men call them because the Lord have rejected them. There you go. There you go. So, let's go back to the video. It said in the second covenant, it has no death. We are, okay, so can y'all can die? Can we are the y'all die? Can you die? Hey, 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 All right, brother. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna make a fuss about that. That's fine. My thing is, okay. can you die? Can I die? Yes. Mm -hmm. It said in the second covenant, it has no death. Okay. Yeah. So you. So you, are you telling me that y'all can't die? According to the scripture, we can't die. die. According to the scripture, it, it, it has no death. Oh. All right. So time will tell if them two dudes can't die. All right. Well, it is written there's some which will not taste death. Let me get that. Maybe that's them, right? <laughs> Maybe that's them two dudes. There's some which shall not taste death. All right. Here it is right here. These are the words of Yahweh Shai, by the way. Time will tell, man. Time will tell. Uh, Mark, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 16 and 28. Uh, Matthew 16 and 28 verily verily means truly I say unto you there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom now at the time how wish I said that there were certain individuals there that in this generation they shall not see death until Yahweh Shai comes with those angels. It wasn't talking about back then because obviously those same individuals Yahweh Shai was talking about, eventually they died and they kept coming back through their generations. It's talking about now, all right? There's certain Israelites out there that will not see death because some brothers are going to be put to death. Some brothers are going to be made martyrs. Scriptures tell us this. But there's certain Israelites that's not going to see death until they see Yahweh Shai coming in the clouds. And it's talking about now. This is the generation when Yahweh Shai will come through those clouds with the holy angels to bring down the society, destroy this kingdom, okay? All right, so let me get to what we are under, which is grace. I don't want to make this video too long. And the scripture for that is Romans, the sixth chapter. You know, the Apostle Paul was very clear what we're under. He even said we're not even under the law. We're under grace. Let's read it. 
Romans the sixth chapter, the fourteenth verse. For sin, what is sin? Transgression of the law, right? For sin shall not have dominion over you. What does he mean by that? For sin will, shall not have dominion over you. Because, you know, being in the sinful flesh, there are times that we sin. All right? Being in the sinful flesh, there are times that we sin. And we really can't help it because sin dwelleth, like the Apostle Paul says, sin dwelleth within us. Sin dwelleth within this flesh. But sin will not have dominion over us. Why? Because we have grace. We've been showed grace. <coughs> Excuse me. We've been showed grace by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. So we ha at least have a chance to get right. We, we at least have a chance based on based under that grace. We at least have a chance to be delivered by Yahweh Barashim Yahushai and be made perfect. We have the opportunity. We have grace. That's what grace is. Let's keep reading. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law. So that destroys them guys with their new covenant. The new covenant is the law. What is the new covenant? It's, the scriptures is very explicit on that. This is where the Lord said, I will, uh, as a matter of fact, let me answer that with the scripture. What is the new covenant, right? Let's read it in the book of Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel 36. Let's read, let's read the new covenant. What is it? which the word covenant means agreement. And you're going to clearly see we're not under it. All right. Ezekiel 36 and 24. Well, let me start at 25. It says, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. This is the new covenant, the, the new agreement that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, is going to do for us. Okay. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness. And in order for us to be clean, we have to get those new bodies. We have to get those new bodies. Our bodies got to be changed from all your filthiness. Because this flesh within itself is filthy. Why do you think the Apostle Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So we have to be changed. And that's what those guys don't get. For you to be under the new covenant, you have to be changed. So then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart, meaning a new mind, also will I give you. This is the new covenant. And a new spirit will I put within you. Now, for us to have that, we have to be changed. Let me say that again. For us to enjoy that, what I just read there, we have to be changed. The Apostle Paul was very clear on this. In the moment... In the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. And that's going to happen when Yahweh Shai comes. We're going to go from being mortals to immortals. We have to be changed. Next, those two dudes will tell you that they're immortals. Oh, basically, that's what they were saying. They were saying, those two guys, they were saying that they're immortals, meaning they can't die. Can you see how bugged out them two individuals are? If they're immortals, then, 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 then why, are they, why are they still underneath the so-called white man? They should be conquering him, man. They should be out there conquering. You're immortal, right? Should be out there conquering the so-called white man and liberating your people, right? You're immortal, right? Come on, man. No understanding. That's their problem. No understanding. A new heart or the little understanding they did have, the Heavenly Father took it away, okay? A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, which is what we have right now. We have that stony heart. That's why certain times we sin, there's sins we commit, we don't even know it. There's a scripture where it says, a foolish thought with the Heavenly Father's sin. Can you stop yourself from having foolish thoughts in, 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 uh, in this ministry? The answer is no. You can't stop yourself from having foolish, foolish thoughts in this ministry. And the Bible is clear. The Bible says a foolish thought with the Heavenly Father is sin. Okay, so man, we we're we're wrapped we're wrapped up in sin, all right, being in this flesh. Okay, so no, we're not under the new covenant. Under the new covenant, your bodies are changed and you're perfect. Okay, so a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. This is the new covenant. 
And we're going to receive this when Yahweh Shai comes and deliver, it's going to start with the elect. This is, the, this is the blessing that the elect is going to receive. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Now, this is in, in perfection. There's not one law we're going to break when this happens. You can't say that now. There's certain laws you break even when you don't want to. The Apostle Paul said that. When he wants to do good, he finds himself doing evil. All right? The Apostle Paul said that. Are we better than the Apostle Paul? <laughs> and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. That is the new covenant. And it's the same thing said in Hebrews, the eighth chapter, which is where the Apostle Paul got that from. He got that from uh, the book of Ezekiel, what I just read. Let's go to Hebrews 8 real quick. Hebrews 8 and 6. All right. And the new covenant was brought to us by Yahweh Shai. It's through Yahweh Shai we get to enjoy the benefits of the new covenant, like he enjoyed it. Yahweh Shai, he was the first to enjoy the benefits of the new covenant. Was he not made perfect? Yes, he was. He, he said, on the third day, I shall be perfected. So this is what we're waiting for. We're waiting to be perfected, like he was perfected. We're not perfected now. <laughs> Hebrews 8 and 6, But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much more also, how much, all, by how much also, he is the mediator of a better covenant, the new covenant. Who's the mediator? Yahweh Shai. We got to go through the mediator first. The mediator got to change us. And he's going to do it in a twinkling of an eye. And then we're going to be under the new covenant. He is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. What was the promises? Go back to Ezekiel, 36th chapter, what I just read. For if the first covenant had been faultless, that's what we're under. We're still under the first covenant. All right, which is to keep the law, which we can't do, okay, because sin dwelleth within our flesh. All right, for if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second, the new covenant. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, beginning with the elect. The elect are going to be the first ones to taste that new covenant when they're changed. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the, by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. And that's going back to the laws which we received from Moses. Because they continued not in my covenant. What was the covenant? There's these laws, you keep them. The laws were written on tables of stone, which by the way, symbolized our hearts, which is stony hearts. That's why they were put on tables of stone. And we couldn't keep those. As a matter of fact, the, the, when when uh, Moses gave the Israelites the law, uh, not too long after that, they started breaking the law. <laughs> All right, show you how how stiff necked and stubborn and stony hearted our people are, man. Come on, man. You you, you know all you got to do is go back and read the history. You know, <laughs> they received the law. They 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 went off immediately after receiving the law. Okay. Anyway, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by, by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind, the same thing I read in Ezekiel 36, and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Now, when is this going to happen? When Yahweh Shai comes and delivers the elect. Immediately, that's going to happen because the elect is going to be changed. They're going to be given those bodies that are conducive to totally keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Hence, the new covenant. Okay? And as we read on, it says, Under the new covenant, they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And that was the point that Elder Karadzizah made in his video. Okay? All right. So what we are under is grace. Let's go back to Romans 6 and 14. This is what the Apostle Paul said. So since we're not under the new covenant, what exactly what are we under? We're under grace. 
Romans 6 and 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. I already explained that. For you are not under the law, but under grace. We are under grace. So what is grace? What does grace mean? Well, first let's look up the term grace, which literally means favor. We've been showed favor by the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son. That's what grace means. But I'm going to read it to you. All right, because now that you know what we're under, we're under grace. Strong's G, 5485, Charis, Charis. Now I'm going to go right to the point. Goodwill, love and kindness, favor. We've been showed favor. That's what we're under, grace. The Heavenly Father of all the spirits he created, he saw fit to give us favor in the form of giving us the understanding of this knowledge and the ability to keep it, the ability to, to uh, believe in it. That, was also, that also comes from the Heavenly Father. It's called faith. The ability to do it. All right? The love that we have for it. The diligence that we have for it. We, all, we got that from the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. That is the very definition of grace. That's what we've been given. That's what we're under. Let's keep reading of the merciful kindness by which God, which his name is Yahweh, exerting his holy influence upon souls. Right, that's grace. He, give, he gives us the holy influence. The, the reason why we're so diligent is because we got that from the Heavenly Father through his only begotten Son. That is a form of grace. He put the Spirit on us to make sure we're teaching the Word correctly. That's a form of grace. We've been showed favor, and he allows us to do it. He allows us to make these videos. He allows us to go out on the street and preach the gospel. He allows us to fulfill the prophecies written in this Bible. That is grace. That's what we're under. Okay? Because um, like the Apostle Paul said, not of ourselves, but is of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. The, 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 uh, John the Baptist, remember what John the Baptist said. He said, a man cannot receive anything except to be given him from heaven. So we've been given this grace. And like the Apostle Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace given unto me. You got certain Israelites out there that are frustrating the grace given to them, given to them by the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And eventually those Israelites are going to be dealt with. You know who I'm talking about. Riding on horses and, <laughs> and giving fashion Passovers and shit. They are frustrating the grace given to us by the Heavenly Father and the Son. And eventually, they, if they don't repent, they're going to receive judgment. It's very brutal judgment, pursuant to 1 Peter 4 and 17. So, again, of the merciful kindness by which the Heavenly Father, exerting His holy influence upon souls, turns them to Yahweh Shai. See? So we don't do it of ourselves. Keeps, listen good, this is grace. This is grace, brothers. Keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith. Come on, man. That's what we're under. All right, we're kept in it. So let me use me for an example. I've been kept in this faith for more than 33 years. You think it, You think I'm the one that did it? Oh, hell no. I understand who kept me in this faith all these years. Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai has kept me in this faith all these years. And I'm just using me in, as an example. Let's go to Elder Pastor. You think he kept himself in the faith? You think he made himself diligent the way he is diligent now? You think he's doing that by himself? The answer is no. It's the holy influence, like we read in here, the holy influence that comes from Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai that's given to the man for the man to do what he does. That is the very definition of grace. That's what we're under. Okay? So let's read it again. Of the merciful kindness by which the Heavenly Father exerting His holy influence upon souls turns them to Yahweh Shai. And eventually, if they, if they stay that way, they will be delivered by Yahweh Shai. That means that they're part of the elect. Because the only ones that's going to be delivered is the elect. And we can read that in Matthew 24 and 30. The scripture is very clear on this. Keeps, strengthens, increases them in the Christian or in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to, to the exercise of the Christian virtues. Man, that's a mouthful. But that's the definition of grace. 
You know, in other words, the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son, puts the right spirit on us. He doesn't turn us into a reprobate. He puts the right spirit on us to do the things that are pleasing to Him and His only begotten Son. All right? And, and by default, that are pleasing to the true brotherhood. In other words, He gives us the right spirit continually. He makes us say the right things. Huh? He makes us break down the scriptures correctly, rightly, like it says, rightly dividing the word in spirit and in truth, right? Rightly dividing the word, right? He puts an excellent spirit in us. I think it was David that said that. All right, an excellent spirit. Grace, that is the definition of grace, okay? That is the definition of grace. Let me show you another definition. Now, this is from Merriam-Webster. I looked this up, grace. It says, unmerited divine assistance given to humans for their regeneration or sanctification, given to us. We're those humans that have received grace. A virtue coming from God. <laughs> How you get around that? That's what we're under, people. And we're under grace also we're under grace for many things but we're also under grace to learn of the new covenant to understand it and learn of it but are we under it right now the answer is no we have to be changed first we're under grace to be changed eventually to be changed we hope that we're part of that elect the elect are going to be changed every last member of the elect is going to be changed the bible is very clear on this first corinthians the 15th chapter you see, uh, here it says, a state of sanctification enjoyed through divine assistance. Grace is divine assistance. We're getting divine assistance. All right, so the understanding that we have it comes from the Heavenly Father through His Son. That's grace. The fact that we're able to go to camp and go out there and teach the Word, that comes from the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. That's grace. The fact that we're able to vibe among the true brotherhood and feed each other spiritually, that's grace. It comes from the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son. So by now, you that's listening to this video, you should understand what grace is now. And you should understand that that's what we're under, grace. We're not under the new covenant. We are under grace. And the Apostle Paul made it clear with what he said. Let's read it again. Romans 6 and 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. That's what we're under, grace. So now we know what grace means. All right, so I'm going to end the video there. Hopefully you were edified, and as usual, on to the next one.